In this video, we are going to learn how to use lighting and post-processing to make this scene look way better. To use the post-processing, we will have to add the post-processing package to this, um, this project here. So we have to go to Window and go to Package Manager and then select the Unity Registry and then we can search for post-processing and there we have it. So we have the post-processing um, package here and we simply just click install and wait for it to install. When it's done installing, we could start adding the post-processing, but there's a few settings we need to set up before we do that. First of all, we go to files and go to build settings and then we open up the player settings. In here under player, we find other settings and we set the color space rendering to linear instead of gamma. So the reason we're doing this is because some of the post-processing um, effects will need to have this setting enabled to gamma to be shown correctly in the game. So that's why we're doing this to make sure that everything looks like we expect it to do. And there we go. So we can already see that it looks different with this setting. Then we have to go to our window and find rendering and lighting. So we need to set up some lighting just to make things look a bit better. So we can see that there are no lighting settings as default. So we select new lighting setting. And then we say that baked global illumination, that's um, fine. Light mode will be baked indirect. Then we use a progressive GPU to do this. And we remove multiple. And we set the values to 500, 500. And four, one, and two is fine. And then um, compression would be none. We don't want compression on, on, on the light map. And that's it. And then we say generate lighting and wait for it to finish. Then we can select the directional lighting, lighting and select the inspector. So if we look at our shadows right now, you'll see that there's a bit of bleeding. You can see there are, maybe it's hard to see on the video, but there are some places where the sun is actually coming through. Um, and we can fix that by going to our normal bias, I think. And we can play with that by putting it down, let's say normal bias. You can see if we put that to zero, then it's not going to bleed through. The higher it is, the worse the shadows are going to look. So we're just going to put that to zero. And the other settings are okay. I think we could change the color a bit, maybe to white. I like that better. It's up to you if you want yellow or some more orange light. It could also be used to make it look like it's evening, as you can see. And another thing as well, the directional light, the position of that, can also change the time of day. As you can see, the shadows will move. You can use the Y or the X to actually change the time of day if you want to. And then you could change the color at the same time to make it look like evening or night. But let's set the color to white for now. So I am still not happy with the way this looks. It doesn't look as good as it should. It's still too dark. Um, but I am happy with the settings here. So what we're going to do now is to start using our post-processing package. Select the main camera, click on the layer here and add layer. And write post slash um, or dash whatever it's called. Processes. And then uh, space volume. So this is our post process volume um, layer. So select the main camera and select that layer. There by post, not post. So let's just change that to P O S T. And make sure that is selected. Then you add component and we say post process layer. And now you have to set up the main camera. So it's instead of using nothing, we should use the post process volume. Um, or actually not volume, let's just, I'm sorry, I'm renaming this. Add layer, let's just call it post process processing. Makes more sense. So main camera has the post processing layer. That layer is selected here as well. It's post processing under a volume blending. Triggers the main camera, anti-aliasing mode. Um, I think I want to put TAA like that. And you see it already looks different. It's a bit blurry, but we're going to fix it. And I think all these values here are okay. So we're not going to do anything else here right now. 
you can take your camera and move it a bit up and rotate it a bit to make it have a better view of your your scene if you want to and then we're going to create a new empty game object and this one is a post process volume and you add component and add the post processing process volume uh, component then you make sure that this component is a global component so it takes up it is valid valid in the whole scene not just a specific area the weight is one priority is zero and then we need to create a profile so we just click the new button here and it just creates a profile for you so this is if you need different post processing volumes well then you would make different profiles we need to add some effects and these are the effects that were need the linear um, rendering we were setting up in the player settings before so add effect, unity, ambient occlusion, click there. Um, what are we going to set up here? We're going to set the mode to scalable instead of multiple. And the intensity is going to be 0 0.5. Yes. The radius fine. The quality on the other hand would be ultra or the highest one you can put. And yeah, I think that's it. So then we are going to Add effect and select color grading. Open that one up. On the color grading tone mapping, we're going to select ACS like that. Then we are going to say post exposure. We're going to put that as one. And then we are going to say saturation and contrast. We're going to put that at Four and four, and I want to say all the values I'm putting here with post exposure and saturation, and contrast, and all that. Well, that is just my values, what I think looks best. You can change them to whatever you like, and actually, to make it make us able to see it, let's just select main camera um, and make sure that we can see that. Yeah, so let's see post processing. We're going to put the layer as post processing here. So if you like the post processing volume, we can select layer and select that it should be on that layer. And let's see here the contrast four and four. And then we add some green to it, let's say about five, like that. And let's see here if I select red, that's fine. So these are some things you can play around with. You can go and select gamma and play around with the different values here if you want to. You can lift here and play around with those values if you want to. So these are all some things that you can you can play around with. I feel like though that it is a bit too light somewhere. So if, if it's too light or too bright, uh, besides playing around with these settings, you can also go to lighting and the environment and then change the ambient color here uh, to something else. 193, 183, 183. That's a bit that that's the values that I went with earlier, um, and I found them to be to be, be the best. Um, so I actually think this looks pretty good. This is the values that I'm going with for now. And as I said, you can always change these around if you don't feel like it looks as you want it to. Um, but anyway, that's how we can use the lighting and the post processing to make a scene like this look way better, I think, than it does original bit with the normal, uh, what's called the normal lighting and, and no post-processing. Um, yes, so thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.